Hi, this is Vijay from Locobuzz, and welcome to this webinar. Uh, we have a webinar series that is going on uh, uh, in the theme of shaping experiences. In these webinars, we talk to key individuals uh, from the industry to learn about how they are shaping experiences for their customers uh, th through the use of technology. And a key theme of all of this conversation is uh, AI uh, as it is all over, uh, all around us, uh, right? So today's topic is on how to handle millions of conversations. Now, for any brand that is very popular, which will become a household name, there are bound to be a, a lot of conversations around them. For a brand which does social listening to really capture all of that conversation, they will, they they have millions of conversations that they are supposed to reply and they have a lot of intelligence that to glean from right to uh, to talk about this uh, we uh, we actually are blessed to have uh, um, our uh, uh, blessed to have one of our customers uh, urbanic and uh, uh, krishna from there to who leads uh, a customer experience to talk about all of this just to giving giving you a very quick introduction about our guest today, Krishna Gautam, is a vice president of uh, customer experience at Urbanic. He comes with 15 plus years of experience serving in the customer experience domain. He has worked in fast growing organizations. He's been instrumental in implementing a lot of technologies uh, to enable. He, is, he sees technology as a friend to enable the teams to deliver a, exceptional customer experiences on uh, various customer touch points, right? He is uh, really passionate about creating personalized customer experience. And hence, uh, this is the best person to speak about AI because it brings in a lot of opportunities for personalization. And uh, yeah, he's here to share his uh, insights on handling high volumes and yet uh, managing personalization at the same time and how what are his thoughts about uh, artificial intelligence as the state of the art that, as we stand today? And what are its benefits and uh, uh, cautions to use it in automation, right? With that, I welcome Krishna on stage. Hey, hi, Vijay. Uh, glad to be part of this uh, webinar and like I'm very excited to be talking about the best thing that you have come up and we, we always love to uh, be in front of our customers, use our technology and deliver the kind of experience they, they want and they expect. So we are really happy to be part of this uh, session. Thank you so much, Krishna. <clears throat> Krishna, jumping into uh, this thing, I just wanted to uh, ask you a question. Like since the last 15 years, how have you seen the domain of customer experience change? I want you to answer this question, uh, especially because there's so much contrast today with the technology, what one could do versus the last 15 years have been. I'd love to know uh, how you how this journey has been for you. It, it has evolved a lot. Like I've seen the times when it was traditional uh, customer service with phone calls and all those things. And uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of changes in terms of uh, how users perceive customer experience these days uh, versus it was uh, uh, a decade back or 15, 20 years back and how companies are also taking up the uh, automations, uh, the technology into their customer service and customer experience uh, functions to drive the experience for the users. So it has changed a lot. I've seen uh, those days where it was only the telephones or the email supports uh, when, when users would hang on the phone service for hours and hours and uh, then to connect to an agent and now those are not the days right even every it, earlier the customers were also patient right they would wait for hours to get connected to someone to get help but now it's changed now the even the customers are not that patient they want everything fast uh, the connection should be fast the resolution should be fast everything is in should be instant so that kind of involvement we have seen uh, in past two decades uh, where uh, the entire customer experience or customer service function has changed drastically. And thanks to the technology that uh, we have seen uh, over the past decade, uh, 
uh, with the help of chatbots, AI into place. And now uh, uh, in recent years, like Gen AI is also in, in the picture. So these things are helping uh, the CX function overall in terms of improving, enhancing the experience for the users. So it's, it's, I've seen everything. So it's been a great journey so far. So thanks for, thanks for sharing a uh, snapshot of that. So uh, now you mentioned the customers have a lot of options and they have, uh, uh, and their expectation has changed uh, in terms of ability to get a resolution very soon, right? That really brings up a lot of volumes, right? At, at, at any given point of time for a customer service organization. What are the uh, main uh, challenges you feel the companies would face in managing that surge of conversations, let's say at a time? See, uh, managing conversations, or I would say the large volumes is always a challenge. Uh, it's always a challenge and it all depends on the companies, uh, how they perceive it. Uh, uh, and I would say that finding out the challenge itself is a challenge. Like you should know what are your challenges in handling those large volumes. So it's, it's not... It's not the same solution for everyone, right? Every company will have their own set of challenges. They need to first find out what are their challenges. It depends on the industry they are into. It depends on the, uh, at this scale, they are uh, uh, growing. Uh, and it depends on what kind of uh, approach they take to uh, to enhance the experience for their users. Uh, what What's the investment or budget they have, everything. It depends on a lot of factors. But the key point is to knowing what are your challenges. Based on that, you can figure out how to handle large volumes. It's not always, uh, uh, the large volume is not driven always uh, by the growth of the company or the number of orders or the customers that you have. There are various factors as well. It could be you are not doing something right. You might be uh, not handling the customers in a way that you need to handle. There might be something that you can uh, provide them upfront, which you are not figuring out. Then there could be like you, you have lots of repeats, which might be increasing your volumes. So at the end, you have to figure out what are your challenges. And then if you know that, then you will be able to find out what solution would be uh, best for you. Keeping your customers in mind, keeping your business in mind, keeping your uh, uh, industry in mind, everything will uh, have, have uh, a say on what solution you find out. So. If I talk about, let's say, if uh, like when we spoke uh, earlier about how it was 15 years back, 15 years back or 20 years back, if I say the major uh, communication channel for the users were either the phone calls or the emails, right? They used to connect to the customer or to the companies on these channels only. Now we have lots of other channels. We have got chatbots. We have got social platforms. Uh, I, I would say like 10 years back, there were no social platforms, right? Uh, and even when social platforms started, it was not for the brands to handle the customer queries, right? It was not meant for that. But eventually, it came as a channel for the users to raise their concerns, to talk about the brand. So now that's also, you now the queries are also segregating. It's not that one channel will have everything. So based on these things, you need to find out what are your areas where you are strong, where you need to be strong. Uh, and then you find out the solutions, whether it's, it's on social media, whether you want to take more customers on chatbot or ch uh, human chat or on email or phone service, depends on your business nature. So for us, like if, if I say for us, it's not something which is very uh, uh, like being a fashion brand. It's not something that I'll uh, my user will have uh, with, uh, anything that they need right away. Uh, in comparison to a food brand, right? Like Swiggy or Zomato. They, their users would need the resolution right away. So for them, it's better to connect over a call and get the resolution. For it, it's better uh, on, on chat or uh, maybe uh, on social platforms. So that's how it goes. Like you need to figure out your uh, uh, chat issues or your challenges, then get deeper into it. Like what are the root causes of your uh, larger volumes and how to deflect those volumes. And the goal is not always to uh, see that how to handle those volumes. The goal should be like, how can I ensure that the I can deflect the volume? It's not that my customer should not have an issue at the end, right? It's not that they have the issue, they come to me, I fix it. So my goal should be like, how do I reduce the pain points for them so that they do not have to come to me to get a solution? So that's how, like, it, 
it totally it depends on the business how they see it how they figure it out and how, what solution they take up no no fantastic krishna one key takeaway what you said is uh reflection <clears throat> of customer support tickets is really counterintuitive to creating positive customer experience uh, right uh, exactly. so it's like it's always about how can i help my customers and that really comes uh, uh, i mean you can only do that very well when you understand your key strengths and uh, uncover your key challenges by uh, understanding the root cause for this the few several uh, 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 several points that you touched upon where right what brand are you what kind of customers do you serve so that you can actually understand what is really important and if it is important provide them up front so that there is lesser need for them to reach out uh, for such information if at all right so um, uh, that's fantastic right now uh, coming to uh, next question right ai and automation is a friend uh, right in yeah in managing uh, so many uh, millions of conversations uh, let's say uh, right in, in a, with a limited set of uh, talented individuals right how do you see uh, uh, what are your thoughts about that see ai and automation are great things great uh, human can invention so that we can this this helps a lot uh, for the cs functions uh, for sure because uh, again when it comes to managing uh, large volumes it's not always uh, that you keep on adding manpower manpower and to keep on handling the customers at the end you need to because there has to be an end to that right if, if your business is growing you you need to grow as well if uh, if you keep that thing only in mind that okay i just need to handle the customers uh, you always keep on ending having or increasing your staff uh, which will at the end that will impact your business cost and everything that comes into picture right so ai and automation helps a lot in that because that gives you uh, more power that gives uh, more uh, like i would say uh, it, it it helps a lot in your business to streamline your uh, uh, customer queries you can go uh, 24 by 7 like with ai and automation it's not that uh, you'll have to have shifts like ai it works 24 by 7 so the personal uh, it helps in personalization so you can personalize very well uh, i think like uh, any business any company will have uh, almost 80% of the queries as repetitive queries right which are very basic in nature that can be handled by uh, you don't need a person to handle those kind of queries it's only the like 20 to 25% complex situations with where you need the human interaction so why not uh, use ai and automation to deflect those kind of queries from your uh, staff so that's where ai helps a lot because it firstly gives you uh, a scalability option that you can scale at any like whatever volumes you want you can scale up to right because ai is there they can handle n number of customers at the same time it's available 24 by 7 <clears throat> you can personalize you can have you can have your set, set of tone that what what tone you want to use you can have your set of responses it's always uh, consistent there is no inconsistency in responses uh, comparing to the uh, human, uh, human uh, men uh, like agents right so these are the benefits of ai and automation that you can uh, go for a larger volume you as 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 and when your business grows uh, you don't have to worry about that because you have ai in place right that will cater to your uh, majority of the customers like almost 80% of the queries can be handled by ai so yes that that plays a very important role and it helps businesses to scale uh, to a great extent without worrying about uh, uh, increasing the manpower and also it's a, it's a one time investment like ai is not something that you will keep on uh, uh, obviously there are recurring costs as well but still it's a one time investment for the company to invest in uh, training the bots and uh, implementing ai integrating ai to your system everything so once you are done with that you can scale to any number of uh, volumes that you want so it's a great thing to have yes no i yeah, i'm on the same page with you on that uh so one of the things that we feel is what you said uh, 80% is a repeatable question right we really believe uh, customer care is a pattern game you 
there are yeah. several patterns and then many things which just falls into the pattern you have a standard operating procedure that can that an ai can learn in seconds compared to an agent who would take an on the job learning of maybe weeks right so a uh, few things that you also highlighted was uh, fantastic right it is uh, round the clock available it is always a challenge to find people and convince them to work in a uh, in a night shift where you yeah. you have to you 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 have to uh, have the store open in terms of uh, serving customers but you know you don't get so much volumes anyway right so uh, uh, on those times so this really and then another uh, uh, very important thing especially for us in uh, india where the languages change every 300 kilometers uh, exactly. and, and it is multilingual right so that is uh, something uh, super important and then like 80% of the questions and I'm, uh, uh, i think uh, for a company like you your top question is where's my order it exactly. really does not and today very answer. basic things yeah yeah <clears throat> so uh, uh, those things and then uh, now you mentioned there are 20% of the time when there are agents are required and what we feel is uh, human led support is premium premium for the brand to operate and also could be premiumized for customers to get right so uh, what are those situations where you feel human is absolute necessary for various reasons if you could state the reason and uh, the use case that would be fantastic so there would be a lot of such situations like wherever it's uh, requires an emotional connect then you need a human person to uh, attend to it right and uh, it happens it happens all the time it happens in businesses that you need to have uh, you will find some situations uh, for customers where they uh, if you if you give them generic responses uh, like through an ai it won't help them right because they need someone to listen to them to pacify them and then uh, assure them that, okay we are there and we'll help you to fix this out uh, if i if i have to take uh, some examples from our uh, from my my field my company there there could be situations like if someone is someone wants their order like we have everything we have we have uh, automated that thing that okay if your order is there you have placed you will get notifications you if you come to track your order you will have all the informations uh, but you know it's india is a huge uh, country and at times something gets stuck in network then it it's it's there in the network itself then even ai will keep on giving you the same answer that you will get it by this time you will get it by this time but if three four times this happens and customer is still not receiving the order then that time they need a personal touch they need a emotional connect so those are the situations when you need to uh, understand that what what those situations could be how you transfer your customers from ai to the agent so that that becomes a complex situation basically and your your agent can handle the complex situation because then you can have empathy sympathy everything all those things comes into the picture and customers would need that as well because they want someone to listen to them and then understand give them an assurance that okay i am there to help you out so such kind of a things you this is again when you design your uh, ai capabilities into your system you need to figure this out that okay this is the stage where i want the uh, bot to connect to my agent so that agent can uh, take take up the that charge and help the customer and and again also uh, as i said 20% of those uh, things will always be there where you need to connect to human uh, human uh, person right to handle it so so that figuring out is also an uh, an important thing when you uh, establish uh, the ai into your system that what are the situations where i need uh, human intervention so that ai can easily handle the conversation to the agent uh, and what they could be like uh, we figure it out based on <clears throat> like issue types so i know that that there are some issues which uh, i i won't allow ai to handle it because those issues will have complexities so i'll straight away connect the customers to the agent but there are sometimes we know that okay these issues can be handled by ai but at some point if if the ai is keep uh, giving the responses and customer is still not able to figure out what what resolution of ai is giving or sometimes it's as i mentioned about that situation customer still want someone to uh, listen to them that we that, that's when we transfer the agent uh, from ai to the agent so that's how that fi figuring out is very important that 
whether you want to figure out based on the uh, issue types or whether you want to figure out based on the number of conversations that has happened between ai and the customer or whether you want to figure out uh, you you want to find out the sentiment that what sentiment uh, customer is at at that point of time uh, in the conversation when it's happening with ai and if you can like maybe customer has come with this happy sentiment but in the conversation like um, after ai is conversing with the customer the customer becomes too sad sentiment you should know that and then you can transfer the conversation to the agent so those kind of uh, uh, setup should be there when you implement ai into your system no fantastic uh, a key takeaway for me uh, on this answer <clears throat> is uh, uh, right like definitely there are uh, definitely there are uh, avenues where you need a human touch uh, for the empathy that needs to be that that can only come from a human right the ai had ai has, has not perhaps learned it yet uh, right so uh, uh, the where do you figure out like when do you figure out that okay it's 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 the job of an agent right now is about sensing customer frustration in conversation <clears throat> or sensing customer frustration in general to identify the uh, uh, the topics of uh, your customer support like what are the key issue types right so uh, those are the things uh, you you had a point to make uh, uh, yeah so i i as i said like uh, it's the, the figuring out is when you implement it so there are so see there are the different types of ais that you can implement right one is decision trees like that is very simple like you know if x happens you transfer to agent if y happens you the ai keeps on taking then we have the gen gen ai right that's into the picture then you can gauge the sentiments right so you can do the sentiment analysis based on what responses customer is giving and based on those sentiments you can decide again that's also a trainable model that you train your model that okay, these are the sentiments that i figure out and if this is a sentiment i need to uh, i need to handle this conversation to the agent for sure so this is how you figure it out so that depends on what model you are uh, you are you have uh, in your system and if that model is straight forward you have x and y and you do it if it's not a straight forward if it's a gen ai you find out the sentiment do it based on that train your model according to that and that's how you do it yeah no fantastic now uh, coming to another very important uh, uh, topic uh, especially for brands who are very popular on social on social there are many things that could happen you can you can run a campaign and you have a surge of fan conversations you can have a campaign but let's say the campaign did not go well it may be misunderstood by the audience uh, right or uh, there could be many things right like in a in a public eye uh, something who which somebody who represents a brand in some some way uh they make a mistake or they are in the news for a wrong reason the brand is dragged in the news and there is a crisis right what how, what does a customer uh, experience uh, uh, as a department play a role in terms of handling the crisis very well that's a very very tricky thing uh, it happens it happens uh, many times like uh, uh, when we do campaign some some customers are not happy some customers are happy and at times like customers are talking themselves right so it's it in this kind of situations it's very important to know the noise and to know the actual frustrations and how to deal with them uh you need to be very true uh because i i know things goes wrong for sure and many many times it goes wrong it may go wrong so but you need to identify that and if there are something there is something wrong which uh, which has happened you need to accept that you need to tell the customers about the truth and just give them the right picture so that's very important so how so i i'll give you an example like we recently had uh, a very big campaign like in the month of august and uh, no one anticipated like we, we didn't anticipate that our systems will crash and it was it was it was not our system to be honest it was um, our partner system which got crashed and we had a big time backlash on our social media but again it it was it was a situation that we handled we knew that something went wrong we went to each of the customers we informed them we responded to all the comments we responded to all the um 
like what wherever we had on social media wherever we had uh, customers coming up with those kind of issues where they could not place the order we we went to all, all of them we tell them we inform them what was the situation what went wrong and help them out uh, with everything so that's what you need to do whenever there is a crisis be true to yourself be true to the customers uh, to give them the right information so they know okay something was wrong but yes uh the team is there to rectify it and fix those issues so that's very very much important that you wh- whatever goes wrong you fix that and you keep the c- customers informed so uh, what are your thoughts on uh using automation not just from a re- reply standpoint from for a uh, crisis but uh i ability to identify noise because when it's a crisis it is more than just one affected party talking to you many times it's just general noise uh w- what are the tricks that you know of how to identify noise so uh, you need to know like uh, uh, you will of course uh, get to know which are the noise because when you go through all the comments and uh, the kind of uh, uh, comments which are coming on social then you will be able to figure out okay which is uh, noise and which is actual uh, genuine uh, problem so it it there is no rocket science or there is no uh, trick i would say to find this out it it's that you have to go through everything and and uh, we our team does that like we we don't want that okay if you have 1000 comments on any post like you just uh, scramble and then see like which are important no you have to go through each and everything to find out okay this is the actual problem this is just the noise right and at times like for such crisis situations we don't even uh try to find out noise we will just see that okay if someone is frustrated and it's in the similar lines it's not just about uh, they are talking something very different or something if it's something is in similar line we need to address to that customer as well and then again like uh, on social it also very uh, important to see like who the user is you you can see the profiles you can see the uh, the profile is right or not those kind of things that so there are many things but there is no trick as such that you can easily figure out uh, whether it's a noise or it's a, it's a actual problem but you need to see like if if it's a crisis then it's a crisis right you need to understand that okay whoever is coming for that thing is uh, with with maybe with the genuine problem and if it looks similar then you should address that yeah oh, thank you uh so uh, jumping on to the next question uh, we'll talk about automation strategies uh, right uh, f- first and foremost automation as you have al- earlier stated is the best friend for you to do the repeatable tasks the repeatable tasks could be 80% of uh, what you do right what are the best avenues to identify what you can automate tomorrow what uh, is there a playbook to identify the the best uh service line for you to automate uh, yeah so uh as i said in the beginning the best way to find out uh, the solution is to know about your challenges so if you know what are your challenges what are your problems so you will know what kind of solutions and automation is definitely one of the solutions and now uh, if you know like my problem is that a lot of customers are asking for order status if that's my majority of the queries which are coming up i know that order status is something which i can take tackle without connecting to any agent so how i can do that then i know that for order status or order tracking i can automate things and there could be various types of automations that i can do and as i said uh, my goal should not be just to uh, reduce the uh, like how to handle those queries but how can i make sure that uh, the customer doesn't have to come to uh, to the company or to the brand cs team to know about this status i can do a lot of uh, things so that's where when you uh, when you decide to strategy to make a strategy for automation and to involve ai into your company or into the system you need to figure out first what are your key challenges what are key uh, queries or the, the top queries that your customers are coming up with and if you know that then you know okay these are the things these are five things that i can definitely automate now how to automate these things can i do an option of self service self service is the best thing that you can go for uh, when you talk about automation because that that will reduce that that is the best way to deflect your queries or your volumes right so you can can you provide self service so 
implement self services in your uh, website or the app whatever you use and then something that you cannot have self service you need to introduce chatbots integrate chatbots with your system so that the system it it integrates with your system can provide the real time information so for example like if we if we talk about banks like 15 years back or i would say 10 years back uh, you would see, see huge queue in banks right for any anything that we wanted to do we had to go to banks right whether you have to deposit money you have to withdraw money or you have to transfer anything you had to go to banks they did fantastically they inv- they brought this self service net banking so now everything can be done by yourself right you don't have to step into a bank i i don't remember i have stepped into a bank for years now right Yeah. so this is how you need to find out like what automation is required whether it's a self service that you need whether it's in a chatbot that you need whether it's in automated responses that you need so w- once you know what are the issue types what are the challenges that your customers are facing then you will be figure able to figure out what kind of uh, automation you need to have self service is the best thing that you can have provide everything uh, uh, that that's required for your customers on the app itself and still like even even if you provide self service there will be customers because you cannot make every customer happy right there will, there will be customers who would still want uh, to connect to the cs team then you can have the chatbots ai can take a uh, take a place there like you can have the chatbot if they ask where is my order your ai can track the order status give the information in a in a normal response way that okay hey your order is right now is in this stage and it will be delivered by this this is date so customer will know okay if someone has responded to me that's a satisfaction for me though i could check it on the in the app as well so that's how like uh, uh, the different levels you take up like first is service uh, self service then you take the chatbot implement chatbot to all across your channels whatever channels you have whether it's a bot whether it's a, a, a email or social platforms you can implement the chatbots everywhere so use that and uh, and these are the ways that you can uh, manage these large large volumes as well and even deflect the uh, volumes and can give better experience to the customers where they can go about the self service itself and find the answers whatever they need by themselves and i can i i think uh, telecom is also a great example for that like earlier we used to call airtel vodafone yeah. and we used to <laughs> hang on lines for hours right now i i don't to uh, think anyone calls airtel right the self service of airtel is quite good right even if you have if you go to airtel store, stores like you won't find two, more than two to three customers at a time that's so very for very complex queries or things that they need to do so the self service is the best option for automation i guess oh fantastic now uh, you spoke about uh, chatbots uh, right so what are your uh, uh what what are the best practices to uh deploy a chatbot right there there is gen ai chatbot there is decision tree chatbots right now uh that's my uh, first question and uh, another question to that is uh should chatbot also like try to engage with the customer after they have after they have resolved what what are the strategies that you can employ in a chatbot so that it can maybe make an offer maybe maybe try to continue the conversation to know a little bit about the customer better right so these are the two questions that i have around uh, chatbots so again it, it all depends on your requirements right uh, uh, i personally still i'm not into the gen ai chatbots uh, as of now because uh, i'm i'm still not that confident with that uh, decision tree chatbots are uh, quite good like it, it it's like again in decision tree chatbots also there are two types like one is very static and one is dynamic right so you integrate something with your system so you can provide the real time information the dynamic informations to the users that works very very well uh, so far yeah. uh, <clears throat> uh, static ones are not so good because that's as equivalent as uh, putting up faqs on your website so uh, so if you have dynamic chatbots uh, decision tree chatbots it works well uh, but yes gen ai is already there in the picture since last two years so it's evolving it's coming up so soon we will also like uh, we'll see more uh, iteration to it so probably uh, i'm not sure maybe 
one year down the line, we'll see better chatbots coming up with Gen AI, which can give uh, more human-like responses, which is still there, but it's that it's not fully ready, I would say. Uh, I, I cannot trust because <laughs> uh, you need to have lots of training. You need to have uh, lots of uh, logics put behind uh, uh, how to handle those customers. Uh, so yeah, that's there. But uh, this 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 part is one part like where what kind of chatbots you can put. You can put uh, both the things, but Genia is still new, so we can still wait for some more time. Plus, it's very expensive as of now. So again, if, if your budget allows to go for Gen AI, nothing better than that. Uh, you can uh, have a lot of uh, logics and try to make something which is workable then can uh, verify it uh, time to time and see if it's working well or not. Um, but decision tree one is like very, very with integrated with system is very fine. It's working absolutely great. Uh, coming to the next question, like it's it's whether the chatbot key, uh, should continue the conversation yes uh, it depends uh, what what your business requirements are if you want to collect more information if you want to uh, know more about the users you can do that right uh, you can ask more questions you can uh, gather more information uh, the csat is one of the best examples a lot of companies are doing that like even after resolving the conversation they would ask the customers about the ratings and all yeah. that can have various levels like if you want to just rate the conversation you want to get ratings about other things of the uh, your your experience about the entire organization nps or those kind of things but if you want if like if you are in, in uh, b2b business you can do a lot of other things like uh, like local ones, like there you are in B2B business. You, if you, if I interacted with your bot once and uh, I've just f found what, what I needed, but later on you want to gather more information like what are my requirements, what I'm looking for, what are the timelines, uh, uh, any, anything that you want specifically based on the business nature, based on your requirements, you can definitely collect that. There's no problem as far as the customer is ready to provide those information. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, no, definitely. Like uh, I was, I asked that question from uh, a CSAT uh, standpoint itself because uh, you have an opportunity, definitely with a chatbot, right? You you really have an opportunity yes. because you have self like essentially, uh, uh, cus customer was served on autopilot, right? So because there was no human touch there, it's better to measure what the customer was feeling about it. Uh, yes, we have, we do that. Uh, we do that, and it's it's absolutely necessary because uh, then that's how you know whether your chatbot is functioning well or not. If customer is happy with the uh, the resolution that has been provided by bot, uh, the, the CSAT is one of the best metrics to know about it. So yes, that's that's very important to collect. Yes. So uh, that one, and then uh, another. Uh, even I wanted to make a point on the uh, on what kind of uh, uh, chatbots to use. Uh, I feel like uh, uh, I, I am uh, pro Gen AI, Gen AI uh, Krishna. Yeah. So I feel uh, uh, I really feel if a, many of like the bots have been existing since ten years now. Uh, so yeah. almost the penetration of the bot is like upwards of 90% everybody is using it at some point some form or the other i feel you should just look at how many failures are happening if there are a lot of failures so simple questions that you may have trained it's just the user is not using the same utterance as the ones that you have trained right that's that's been a biggest challenge so far if that's the case, I think generative AI is going to be a night and day difference for you uh, in terms of uh, like really answering answering the customer question because you you could understand it clearly even despite Absolutely. the utterance change. So I, I think that is uh, something uh, which is like a table stakes right now because you've done that investment in terms of building your knowledge base of question and answers and things like that. What could be a uh, self-serve kind of an opportunity just because of a different utterance it is now a customer support ticket uh, i think that is a uh, uh, that's that's a wide gap a generative way i can really fill that very yes, well yes that that's what that's what i said that that's why i'm i'm a bit skeptical because of that reason only because when when you invest on these kind of things you it's it's not uh, cheap right it's it's expensive thing and if you have invested a lot on this 
Now you would want that the uh, deflection should be there, right? It should not that uh, after every occurrence or utterance there is a ticket created, right? Then I, I'll have two things uh, running parallelly, right? So the customer is uh, just getting everything on uh, bot, and then at the end says, "Oh, I, I, I don't know. I want a human. Uh, I want someone to answer me, right?" Because Customers are very smart these days, like and with chat GPT and all, everyone knows what is a bot and what is where where is the human intervention. So if someone is uh, is like, so if customer wants, like they will play around and they'll at the end connect to the agent because those utterances, like they'll keep on asking the same thing uh, to the bot and when Gen AI responses. There, there has to again. There will be an end uh, that you will decide in your system with logic that okay, after these many utterances, you need to connect to the agent, you need to create a ticket. So that will go. So that's where I'm a bit skeptical whether it is going to help me or not. So yeah, I know it. The, there will be solutions to this as well at the end. Like we'll, as I said, after a year, maybe probably we'll see more evaluations. Uh, uh, more in, uh, things will come up for Gen AI as well, and probably we would be able to use it in a better way. Uh, and probably this gap also, uh, technology will be able to uh, fill this gap too. So yeah, let's see and wait. So my only uh, concern was this, that whether if I invest into this, will I be able to deflect it or not? If not, then I'll be uh, like, I'll be having two costs together, two things uh, running parallelly. I understand that, Krishna. Um, so, uh, coming to uh, coming back to our uh, 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 theme of handling millions of conversations yeah. together, it's like to de depict a voluminous operation in customer ex uh, in customer <clears throat> experience. As a customer experience leader, what's on your dashboard to know <clears throat> on on such occasions when there are surge of volumes? What are the key metrics that you uh, pin on your screen to see, to say that, hey, we're doing okay. And what are the things that you, what are the thresholds that, or which metrics do you have threshold on to say, okay, if this falls below this metric, something is not uh, being done right and I will intervene immediately. What are those metrics? See, the, the biggest thing that I, uh, I look at it when it's about the search or it's about uh, high volumes is the, uh, waiting time so how much wait uh, like what's the time that my user is waiting to get connected to someone that's the biggest thing because once a uh, customer is connected to someone after that we'll handle it there's no problem so uh, it's, it's that's that's the one metric when there is a spike or there is a surge that I'll I'll watch for because uh, that will give me uh, the information what I need to do next to reduce that waiting time once once that is done after that like the key metric that i'll always look up to is the csat uh, if whether the customer is satisfied or not uh, so csat uh, so when when we look at the metrics our metrics are always uh, what customer says we we don't look at the uh, response time we don't look at the resolution time resolution time is something that we know okay we need to manage but uh, it's not a very key metric for us response time is for sure not because Anyone can manage response time. That's not a big deal. But what customer says makes much difference. And that should be the uh, key metric, like whether at the end my customer is satisfied or not. If there is a good CSAT score, if there are good ratings, uh, then whatever. Like even if I've taken half an hour to resolve any concerns on the chat, it's fine. Uh, uh, that's OK. The customer should be happy. So the CSAT is the uh, biggest metric that we look at and the ratings that we get from the customers. But before customer gets connected, waiting time is the yeah. most important metric, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Uh, uh, so, no, I love the way you said that uh, the evaluation of your operations is what the customer says it is. It is, after all, a department for elevating customer experience. It's fantastic. I have a follow-up question to that. While CSAT is really a holy grail of understanding really what the customer feels about you at that any given point of time. But the industry-wide challenge is not everybody will wait to fill it. Uh, in such cases, what are your remediation methods to maybe get it? Or what are the best ways to ask for CSAT? 
so uh, yeah that's the that that's a challenge like uh, most of the companies face but you need to ensure that how you can have high response rate to your csats uh res- i know a lot of customers will not feel the csat so any happy customer is not definitely definitely not going to feel the csat is the only who are not satisfied or who have really got the exceptional services are going to fill it out but what we do is we always ensure that we ask customers that uh, uh, like we'll we'll ask them that okay you will receive a csat and if you are happy please uh, let us know like how we how do you feel about this uh, support that we have provided so it's always good to ask customers otherwise they will not feel <coughs> they will not feel this uh, so uh, and again in this also we we uh, we ask all the customers we have a set uh, like uh, for bot if i say bot will definitely ask customers every time and it's it's instant so its customer is not going out of the screen so they'll see it and they'll feel it so bot we have a great response rate there is no issue with that but when it connects to the agent then that time then uh, you will you will have to pitch for the csat and we try to keep the customers engaged throughout the conversation once the customer is connected landed to the agent then the agent will ensure that the customer is engaged uh, throughout so if the engagement is high you will have a very high chances of receiving the responses if the engagement is low like you are because if we talk about chat like a lot of customers will not keep waiting for your responses so if you if you have delayed responses customer has given you a response now after 4 minutes or 5 minutes you are responding customer will not be engaged so you need to ensure that how you can keep the customers engaged so that uh, they are not going out of the window if they go out of the window then it's very difficult to get uh, c set responses from them if they are on the window then you can you, there is a very high probability of getting responses so that's one of the way and the second is like pitching it at the best like you need to tell them why you want one this is at what why it matters to you tell them and i'm sure they'll fill it out oh fantastic uh, i i also feel like if it's a voice led calls uh, voice led setup if the talk time of the customer is more than the agent that's when you know it is like you have an engaged customer there i think your yeah. propensity for that person to give you a rating is uh, higher uh, another thing is uh, apart from voice there are also a lot of other digital channels where this conversation is happening even if a customer does not give a csat there are the alternative ways are to really measure the customer sentiment at the end of the ticket or generally measure customer uh, sentiment so that you have an alternative metric hey we do we go okay right so uh, you the the objective is to leave the customer happy at the end of the ticket or at the end of the conversation uh, technology allows you to measure that and uh, that's that could be a an alternative to csat since csat is very dependent and of on customer giving you so yes there are various ways like one of the ways i told you that you can pitch for it the uh, you can ask and can keep the customers engaged right that that can happen when it's uh, over the call or it's over the chat right but even if you want to take the uh, csat there are ways you can put a notification you can send uh, csat surveys through whatsapp you can uh, like there are ways like so uh, either put a push push notification or send an uh, whatsapp message asking if hey, you had an interaction with us how what do you feel about it please rate us kind of things and if if it's if it's on uh, whatsapp it gives better results right better response rate because uh, we all are on whatsapp we'll definitely check our whatsapp once or twice in a day for sure and you will not leave anything unread right so again there also it will be uh, there, there are possibilities that someone will read and not respond but you still get high response rate there so it it like uh, you need to define or uh, you need to um, it's how important it is for you and if you really want users to give you uh, csat you need to always uh, remind them uh, the reminders could be over the chat or the call or then you can put 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 some notifications and try to get it and other than also like it's not always just about the csat right we as i said we csat is a very important metric for us we definitely measure that and we do have a very high uh, response rate as well but if we are not getting csat that's not the end for us like we still go beyond beyond csat as well the other metric that we track is uh, nps 
So LPS also gives us uh, uh, a lot of information about what, how, how was customer's experience. And then like CSAT, generally we uh, we measure just for this CX team, right? Like uh, on the based on the interactions. But when uh, we are not still getting CSAT, the NPS is another metric that we go for. And that is beyond CX, that is beyond uh, uh, just customer service. We we ask for the NPS for, as, a, as a whole. Like, overall experience like for, for the users. So that will give us information about customer service, about our product, about our logistics, about our, uh, yeah. everything. So that's another metric that we follow. Yeah. Fantastic. At the end, the, the goal is just to know how customer feels about you, whether it's uh, or, or about the conversation or about the overall experience. Yeah. So no, fantastic. Uh, this that's really exactly why uh, 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 the CX teams today are uh, uh, they're actually positioned to ensure there is success with uh, the customers and uh, like technology is only a friend <clears throat> to uh, help you there like CSAT and NPS are uh, one of the great tools to understand what customer really feels about you and uh, social listening as another uh, angle to that which also helps you understand really what the customers in general uh, feels about you what what's the perception about your brand right now coming to the last segment uh, of this is like let's talk about future of ai in cx now what are the future advancements that you are most excited about for that to be in cx in your teams uh a lot of things i guess <laughs> uh, one of the things that you mentioned about like you you uh, I know you like uh, pro Jenny kind of thing. So we we are definitely that that's something which we are uh, definitely looking forward to. That how Gen AI or uh, these kind of advancements can help in CX. Um, I would say uh, AI has evolved a lot. We all already have a lot of things that uh, is there in place uh, across the customer journey. Like uh, at each touch point, we are using AI right now. Uh, but it's it's just that how uh, better we can make it. That's what uh, we 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 are, we are looking forward to. Uh, so that whatever gaps, the small gaps which are still there, that can those can be filled. Uh, if I Gen AI is one of the examples that I want uh, I would want to give, like because of whatever gaps we discussed earlier in, in this yeah. conversations, if those are filled, uh, then it's it's a great uh, achievement and it it will help a lot uh, for CX professionals like to to get Gen AI. I, I know a lot of uh, friends who are still skeptical in using Gen AI and some are still using it as well. So those ga if those gaps are filled, it will help a lot. So these are the advancements that we feel that if uh, if it's there, uh, it will be better. Fantastic. Now, uh, the last question I want <clears throat> Uh, uh, leave the audience with an advice, especially I am uh, referring to all India has become an e-commerce hub, uh, right? There are several D2C brands coming online. What better uh, uh, than a lighthouse of a brand that is uh, Urbanic, right? And uh, a, C a CX leader from there. What is your advice to the upcoming brands in the e-commerce space on how like how should they uh, uh, how should they imbibe customer centricity and uh, how should they run their cx uh, better with the limited capabilities or the limited um, resources that they may have at the beginning see uh, advice would be a very big word i guess <laughs> because we all are in the same boat same boat and uh, we all trying to figure out how to uh, uh, enhance the experience for our users. So uh, what I would suggest is like uh, knowing your customers is the key thing, right? You should always know who your customers are, what are their demands, what are their expectations, what are their behaviors, what they like, what they do not like. That's very important. So if you have uh, the knowledge about those things, then definitely it makes uh, like your job much easier that what what strategies you need to implement what kind of uh, things you need to have in place uh, what kind of experience you your customers expect so that you can work on those lines uh, so that's very important knowing your customers and then uh, 
I think like, yeah, using the uh, technology is another uh, thing that you should always go for it. Like if your budget allows, if you are, if you have, uh, uh, if you are excited about it and if you want uh, to enhance your ex experience because AI and automation or technology always helps in enhancing the customers. It's not the, it's not for uh, replacing the manpower. I, I, I would like to say that because it, it's there to enhance the experience. It's there to scale your business, scale your support. Uh, it's not to, uh, it, it's not that you like you want to uh, uh, get rid of the manpowers. Like so, try to uh, use the technology to enhance the experience. All right. So thank you so much for that. Uh, just summarizing the advice uh, uh right it is really advice krishna don't playing that uh so uh, first of all understanding your customers right so uh, you can understand your customers your market better by not only like uh eyeballing just conversations about you or re your reviews or use a technology like locobus to understand your customers in a very structured way right and also uh, you are small right as a uh, company you can now look up to or look into your uh, competition and what is the general publicly available conversation about them and their reviews Th that really uh, uh, hardens your customer understanding and using that and what krishna also said with the use of technology you can really scale the operations uh, uh, with the limited resources uh, that is available so uh, yeah so that's the end of this webinar. I would love to thank uh, Krishna for his uh, uh, participation in this. Like you, you've given us a, a lot of uh, a lot of insight into how a CX function works and how Urbanic thinks about its customer experience uh, and its use of technology and how inclined uh, you are and your team is uh, towards technology and the use of it. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you so much for inviting me for this and giving me this opportunity to share my experiences, uh, little things that I know. So really, really fantastic. And I really enjoyed the conversation with you. Likewise. So uh, thank you so much for the audience who's tuned in. And we'll be back with another uh, episode soon uh, under the shaping experience. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Bye.